Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. Well, for our next look into the origins of Monster Hunter Rise's yokai infused monsters, we left it up to the patrons to decide. And oddly enough, the winner of that run was Ratna Kadaki of all monsters. The fire breathing, baby spewing, 20 foot spider that I figure would have gripped too many people with arachnophobia to ever have a video on it see the light of day. Oh, don't be coy. You knew exactly what you were doing labeling Kadaki as the spider thought of Monster Hunter Rise. That's been a meme on our stream for years now. You're basically shouting at people at this point that Kadaki is a Jorogumo. Plus, just look at her introductory video in game and tell me she's not a Jorogumo. Okay, to be fair, that's just the assumption that I had on the surface level. I know good and well that first impressions can be extremely deceiving. Plus, do you have any idea how many spider yokai there are out there, and how many derivatives they have? Regardless, there's a huge pool that Capcom could pull from when it comes to the yokai origins of Ragna Kataki. So the question now is, which one is she? Well, start simple. Things like physical characteristics, behavior, I mean, come on, we're dealing with a fire-breathing, dress-wearing, almost arachnid. There's a lot of weirdness going on here. Alright, fair. So, let's open up with the one thing that I know a lot of you have probably already noticed about this gal. The white gown of spider silk that Kadaki wears. As stated in her bio, this creature's body is covered in webbing, as if wearing a white gown. Now, some folks argue that Kadaki's wearing a standard issue wedding dress. I mean, when you look at the kinds of armor that it makes for hunters, as well as the Catholic-looking priest vestments her parts make for palicos, it seems like it would just be a flat reference to Western weddings. But I also know that some of you already know that it's not quite that simple. Because if you look closer at Kadaki, as much of a horrifying prospect as that may seem, you can actually see that she has a large hood around her head. Definitely larger than any Western veil, that's for sure. That's because Kadaki's wedding dress is actually a spider silk spin-off of one of Japan's most traditional and recently controversial bride gowns, the Shiromuku, a highly specialized kimono founded as far back as the Muromachi period. Now on the surface, the Shiromuku might seem like your standard extravagant kimono, but what makes this gown particularly interesting is that the Shiro Uchitake, the top layer kimono of the ensemble, has an extremely thick and padded tail at the end of the layer. And you'd think, why on earth would you drag something that pretty and white on the ground? But that's entirely the point. This kind of long kimono is intentionally dragged on the ground to give it an elegant look to the ensemble. So, like western dresses. Kinda, but unlike a regular veil, you're dragging padding behind you that's at least a pound or so heavy. But something even more telling is the fact that when it comes to the shiromuku, even the hoodie solde or swinging sleeves, can be so long that they just about drag the ground. And it's this little detail that links Kadaki's look to the shiromuku closer than any western wedding dress. Kadaki's model has four of her legs draped in not so much a dress, but really, really long sleeves for her legs. And if you doubt that, get a look at her official ink painting. There's no denying the fact that she's wearing really, really long white sleeves. Not to mention how obvious it is that Kadaki is wearing a Wataboshi headdress too. Nearly identical to the size and shape compared to the ladies in Japan getting hitched. So if that's the case, why does all the armor and gear made from Kadaki's parts all represent western idealisms of marriage? Like the gown, the suit, the priest vestments, and so on. I know this video is quickly becoming more about weddings than yokai, but that's been something that's been rattling my brain lately. Simple. You ever heard of the phrase, born Shinto, marry Christian, and die Buddhist? It may seem a bit paradoxical, but it's a phrase that a lot of scholars have used to describe Japan's unique look on the relationship between life and religion. Despite 80% of the population of Japan claiming to be non-religious, I'd estimate that that same 80% got taken to Shinto shrines for early life celebrations, like Shichiko-san, a Shinto rite of passage ceremony for children aged 7, 5, and 3. I'd also estimate that those same 80% have participated in Buddhist funeral rites like Soul Shiki, 
and I'd say at least two-thirds of Japan's newlyweds partake in a traditional kekon shiki, as well as a stylized Christian wedding on the same day. Why? Because it's cool and fashionable. Japan has been a syncretistic country for a long time, with Shinto and Buddhism coexisting literally side by side for hundreds of years. That's why despite being a Christian ceremony, it's still very Japanese. And that's why despite Kadaki being a symbol of traditional Japanese marriage, all the gear that you make off of her is more European and Christian. It's just a symbol of Japan's syncretistic nature. Alright, alright, alright. But what does all of that have to do with Kadaki's yokai inspirations? Because all we've established here is that Kadaki is a walking symbol of Japanese marriage. Though we also know that based on her official title of Wandering Widow, those marriages ended with Kadaki brutally savaging each of her mates to death. Now, granted, there are plenty of female spiders out there that will absolutely eat the face off their male consorts, but there's only one kind of yokai that fits that bill. The spider thought herself, Jorogumo. So for starters, let's have a look at that name. This day and age, most people write out the kanji for Jorogumo like this, altogether meaning prostitute spider, basically referring to the Jorogumo's propensity to feast on simps. And no, that's not a joke. Jorogumo would exclusively entice young, stupid men who follow their loins rather than their wit by transforming into a human form so lovely, you'd be surprised there isn't a VTuber model of it yet. But once the Jorogumo is able to lure in a young, dumb, virile male into her cave or canopy, she transforms back into her true form of a giant orb weaver spider, spinning her prey in a web and basically slowly feasting on his life force over the course of weeks. But here's the funny thing. The name Jorogumo used to be more commonly written like this, meaning Entangling Bride. And if there's two things we know for certain about Ragna Kadaki, is that she's rocking that bride motif, no question, and one of her most annoying attacks is her split web shot that entangles anyone within a wide cone in front of her. But that's just the beginning, because the other thing that the Jorogumo is known for, as shown here by the Japanese yokai pioneer Toriyama Sekien, is that the Jorogumo either have the ability to control or straight up birth smaller spiders. You can see on each of her exposed spidery limbs a single thread with a much smaller orb weaver jumping out. And what's another one of Kadaki's more annoying abilities? Launching her rachnoid children at you with a single strand of webbing connecting them to their mother. As stated in Kadaki's bio, it is always seen carrying its offspring with it. Known as rachnoid, these little creatures provide their mother with support in moving around and catching prey. Be very careful of their combined attacks. And finally, going back to Sekian's Jorogumo depiction, you see those little wisps coming out of the faces of those tiny spiders that the Jorogumo controls? Yeah, that's not webbing, it's freaking fire! Oh yeah, apparently the Jorogumo's spider assistants, and mayhaps even the Jorogumo herself, have the ability to breathe fire. Typically a trait used to burn down the homes of those who would meddle in the Jorogumo's hustle. And what's the final attack that both Kadaki and her rachnoids possess? Yeah, they blast fire! So tell me then, how in the world could Kadaki not be based off the Jorogumo? Because that's not quite everything. Granted, I will concede to you that there are indeed countless aspects of the Jorogumo that Ragna Kadaki possesses, but that's not everything. There's one other yokai that fills in the gaps, the Tsuchigumo. Wait, what? But the Tsuchigumo is depicted as male when it comes to old Japanese history and media, isn't it? Most of the time, yes, but not all the time. Case in point, the Tsuchigumo Soshi. Written, or I guess I could say drawn in the 14th century, the Tsuchigumo Soshi tells the story of Commander Minamoto no Yorimitsu, aka Daiko, alongside Watanabe no Tsuna and the other Shi Tenno, or Four Heavenly Guardians, who travel to Denai Field in the mountains north of Kyoto, where they encounter a flying skull that leads them to a dilapidated estate. Within this massive building, the four were harassed and spooked by all manner of yokai and oni. But then, all of a sudden, the owner of the house and the origin of all the spooks a beautiful woman appeared before them, about to cast some kind of spell. But ever quick on the draw, Yorimitsu drew his blade and slashed at the woman who then fled. Following a bloody trail, Yorimitsu, Tsuna, and the others soon found a deep, dark cave. And in it was not the beautiful woman, but the form of a giant spider. After a long and perilous battle, the Tsuchigumo was struck down with its head cut clean off. From its stomach came 1,990 skulls of its victims, and from its flanks, countless spiders shot out. Now I know that doesn't sound like much of a connection with Kadaki, but consider a few things. One, when you, for lack of a better way to say it, break Kadaki's butt, a bunch of her tiny rachnoids fly out in a similar style to that of the story of Tsuchigumo. Two, it's likely that within this particular tale of the Tsuchigumo, the creature itself was also female. And three, 
The one detail that really makes me think that Kadaki is both Jorogumo and Tsuchigumo. Ragna Kadaki is not a proper arachnid. She technically has six legs, four to walk on and two to hold up her massive abdomen full of spider children. Jorogumo are basically the yokai evolution of Japan's IRL orb weaver spiders, proper arachnids. But Tsuchigumo and her children? If you look really, really close, they only have three pairs of legs, exactly like Kadaki. And for, to complete my point, look no further than Ragna Kadaki's Japanese name, Yatsu Kadaki. Tsuchigumo, as it turns out, goes by a multitude of names depending on the location and time period that it's written in. And one of those alternate names? Yatsu Kahagi. One tiny difference between these two names. So yeah, there's no way in the eight hot and cold hells of Jigoku that there isn't a running theme of both Tsuchigumo and Jorogumo going on here. Dang. But really, that's what makes Monster Hunter Rise's monster so freaking interesting. It's not just as simple as one reference being put in the titanic-sized creature for four schmucks with oversized weapons to take down. You can really tell that the designers of Rise's new creatures really dug deep into all manner of traditional folklore to make up these insanely unique monsters. And you know what's really wild? We're still only just getting started. Between Kadaki and the video we did on Great Izuchi's ties to the yokai Kame Tachi, we've still got at least eight or nine more Monster Hunter monsters to break down when it comes to the folklore that built them. As for next time though, we gotta go back to Resident Evil Village. While we've covered Big Mommy Dimitrescu connections with Hashak-sama, we still have Donna and Moreau's yokai origins to break down too. Before we go though, a huge thank you to the patrons who made this video possible. Personally, I thought it was going to be a really close race between all these monsters, but I guess our in-joke meme won out the day, huh? But if you want to learn even more about the culture and folklore that goes into your favorite games, be sure to sub up, get notified, and keep an eye out for our channel front page. But as always, everyone, until next time, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.